Hey there guys, welcome to Arsenal Fan TV. This is the review of Stoke City versus Arsenal. The final score being nil-nil. For a nil-nil, quite a lot to talk about, but the overriding feeling coming out of the game is a little bit of disappointment considering that in those final stages, I really do feel we had the potential to beat this Stoke City side. Considering that both Manchester clubs have gone to the Britannia this season, as well as us having an appalling record there, I think that coming out of the game with a point to our name is a decent result. Would have been a much better result had we held on against Liverpool and Anfield the other night, but... I mean, two points from these games, Manchester City have lost both of them. I mean, they've still got to play Liverpool as well as Stoke City again this season. So anything could happen in those games. To think we've already played Stoke twice this season, played Liverpool twice. And uh, we've got some decent results on, out of those games. And now we've got a fairly, I wouldn't say comfortable run, but we've got some more winnable fixtures on the horizon. Definitely looking at that game against Chelsea, where I'm hoping we're actually able to beat them for once. So, yeah, it wasn't uh, an ideal result tonight, but I'll, I'll take a point. It's uh, certainly not something to be sniffed at, and I will have taken it before the game, to be honest with you. So, not too disappointed, but it's, um, it's, it's an opportunity missed, I feel, because Stoke weren't at their best today, especially without uh, Shakiri in their side. I certainly felt that they weren't up to the standards that we've seen from Stoke this season. They weren't playing a fast tempo of football that we normally see from them. Saying that they were really hurrying us, they weren't giving us a lot of time on the ball, made it incredibly difficult for us throughout this game. But I felt we did really well in terms of matching them physically. I felt that's something we've struggled with in the past. A couple of seasons ago, if we were playing in a game like this, Especially without Petr Cech in goal, I definitely feel we'd have lost this game about 1 or 2 nil because Stoke did have their chances. Admittedly, in the first half, they were few and far between. They came into life more in the second half. In fact, for that first half, it was a pretty drab game, neither side having too many chances on goal. And that was down to us mainly not having Mazzo within the side. It made the game that whole lot more difficult for us because... We had a severe lack of creativity. Now, before the game, I thought playing Oxley chamberlain through the middle in the Ozil sort of position was a rather good move because uh, it's not a game that you would really associate with Mazzo Ozil. A lot of hard-hitting tackles, cold night away from home. I mean, it's not the sort of game you would associate with Mazzo Ozil. And I did honestly think if he was to play, he would possibly struggle in this game because, as I said earlier, Stoke were giving us barely any time on the ball. You could see him being quite easily won off it. So possibly playing Chamberlain from the start of the game would have been a good idea. But he didn't put in the kind of performance that I was hoping he would. Initially, you would assume that he'd make loads of driving runs from one third to the other playing some really good exciting football but he didn't really do that didn't live up to his name being the ox and I wanted to see a lot more from him in this game him and Theo Walker were incredibly disappointed consistently giving the ball away running into trouble and their passing was shambolic it was so poor you've got a question when our, when our players are coming back from injury the likes of Welbeck um, as Ozil had a slight foot injury today Alexis Sanchez will the likes of Oxley chamberlain and Theo Walcott make it into the side because for me our flanks are picking themselves at the moment you've got Bellerin and Campbell on one side and on the opposing flank you've got Monreal and Alexis on the other side so for me neither of those two players get in the side those two players being Theo Walcott and Oxley chamberlain they've got to do a lot more to get into the team I know how much potential there is to be unearthed in those players but they need to be more consistent they need to get little things out of their game like they need to improve their passing they need to improve their first touch on the ball chamberlain needs to play to his strengths he needs to take on more players the same with Theo Walcott needs to improve his finishing as well. Really disappointing on those um, on those two's behalfs. But there was a lot more to come from Arsenal. I think Olivier Giroud was one of those players that was doing pretty good work for us up top in terms of holding up the ball, trying to get more players involved into the game. But he was not really being found by the players behind him. It was a, was a really tough game for Olivier Giroud. Did have a few chances in this match. One initially in the first half, which was a lovely ball threaded, uh, threaded through by Joel Campbell. Once again, Campbell putting in another stellar performance, playing into Giroud. Giroud, his finish wasn't actually all that good, so it did make Butland save appear all the load better, even though it was a fantastic save from Jack Butland. Really did have a great game tonight, Butland, and uh, really is making a case to be England's number one goalkeeper. But unfortunately, we weren't able to go 1-0 up. And really, apart from that, we didn't have too many clear-cut chances. Aaron Ramsey was looking really good in the central midfield, trying to get things going for us. I thought Flamini had a rather unusually good game for us this afternoon. Credit to him. I think he's been rather decent for the time that we've been without Francis Coughlin. And um, I mean, this whole squad, one underlying factor, I think, is that fatigue is starting to set in. You've got to remember, we've been playing with practically the same 11 for the past couple of games, now the past couple of weeks, couple of months, in fact, whilst we've been coping without the likes of Danny Welbeck, Jack Wilshere etc and it is important that when these players come back into the side we rotate significantly because we're not looking fresh at the moment and we need to have a bit more edge to our game so uh, yeah I think when, we're, when we've got Alexis back in the side when we've got Ozil coming back into that game against Chelsea we should like a whole different team and I'm really looking forward to seeing all these players come back into the side I mean Welbeck's not too far away you'd hope Wilshere's not too far away haven't heard much about that but with Rosicki coming back as well I mean we've got some fantastic options coming off the bench I would have liked to have seen some of El Nene today he didn't really get a, he didn't get an appearance in fact which was a bit disappointing to see I 
think he would have made a whole lot more difference in this game compared to someone like Oxlade Chamberlain, who was pretty poor throughout the course of the game. But going into that second half, had a fantastic chance very early on through Olivier Giroud, firing a bullet header straight down into the bottom corner, which unfortunately was saved by Jack Butland at his near post, parrying it away, and a fantastic save from Jack Butland. But apart from that, not too many clear cut chances. I'm absolutely amazed that the referee didn't issue a single yellow card in this game. There were so many challenges that Eric Peters made on the likes of Hector Bellerin and Joel Campbell in this match, which should have been at least awarded the yellow. I mean, he made about six, seven challenges, which should arguably have been put in the book. One, there was one Arnautovic made on Hector Bellerin as well, which should definitely have been a card. I'm amazed that the referee didn't give one. And there were a few penalty shouts as well, which could have gone in our favour significantly. 50-50s, I would say. I've seen them given, but um, yeah, I mean, I don't think the referee had a particularly good match today. He really did seem to be quite intimidated by the home crowd, which is not something you can allow uh, to be in. And brushing on the home crowd, chance I'm hearing of Aaron Ramsey walks with a limp. I mean, that's just something that uh, I, I, I fail to understand. I really don't understand why Stoke City fans are in a position to boo Aaron Ramsey when he's the one that broke his leg. I mean, do they think that he's been pretending to have a leg break for the past couple of years? I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous that he gets stick off Stoke fans, especially in the way that he does, because it's just not classy. I sincerely hope that we can put this game behind us. It's a decent point gained um, in hindsight, I think. Uh, I mean, especially at a ground where we have a really poor record. But, I mean, uh, against Liverpool and Stoke, two points from two games. It oh, could, would have been a lot better. I'd have ideally wanted four points from these games. But coming up against Chelsea next, got to make that a must-win game. Ozil, Alexis Sanchez possibly coming back into the side. Rizitsky, Onene, you want to see a bit more from these players as well coming back into the frame of things. So an exciting team that we've got. We've got a lot of talent going forward as well now. And I do sincerely hope that we get the win against Chelsea because that's a game that we've got to, got to win now. City are breathing down our neck. But I mean, like I say, they've still got to play Stoke. They've got to play Liverpool again. So I'm not too concerned about where City are in the table at this moment in time. I just want to, I just want to see us open up a bit of a bridge between us and the teams behind us. A nil-nil draw at Britannia. Get your thoughts on this game in the comments box below. Please do like this video if you have enjoyed it. Subscribe to Arsenal Fan TV if you are new to the channel. And as always, I'll be speaking to you very, very soon. A little bit better than my seat, I will admit. Now you see for me, this is, for me, one of the highlights of the tour. You see this? This is a gold Premier League trophy. You would not go to any other ground in the Premier League. Not Man United, not Chelsea, not City, not any of those grounds and CVs because this is unique to Arsenal.